The Delano Polo Award went to Matthias Taub and Conor Matten driving for Gessler Richter. The major news items in the TM Master Cup series are few and far between. There's very little to talk about other than that the MCMA teams are all back here in Quebec and they all had a meeting with TM Master Cup Series management and the race director. Apparently all the MCMA teams have taken their fines and they're all ready to go racing this weekend. There's still a few quiet rumblings about not having a provisional grid place for Indianapolis. However, I believe that will die down a little bit as time goes on. As far as next season is concerned, the main question is this. Which of the manufacturer teams will stay and which will go? The Mitchell and Sons team has said they want to stay in the series. However, Thomas Mitchell, the team owner, said that he will not work with Saar ever again. Peter Keyes, the owner of Team Saar USA, reminded Thomas Mitchell in the press, mind you, remember, we still have a share in your team. Where do your engines come from? Make of that what you will. Tremwell and Saar have done quite a bit of marketing in Canada. I don't think that either Tremwell or Saar wants any bad publicity coming out of this race. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. On the warm-up lap, there were problems for Danny Saab in the 81 car. A cut tire brought him into the pit lane in the full throttle motorsports entry. Sauvin would not lose a lap, however, he would lose quite a bit of ground. This 4.8 mile track is the longest the series has ever raced on. Here we are at the front of the field. Matthias Taub and Packer Carroll lead the field to the green flag. Pretty good start for the most part. Luciano Savarel in the three car having a go, it looks like. Uh, now, looks like Taub has cleared Packer Carroll. Marcus Lee out of the grass. Chris Johans is going a little bit wide. Chris Johans off the track along with Luciano Savarel and Michael Sykes. But as you see, coming down towards through turn two, uh, Matthias Taub has the lead. Packer Carroll slots into second. Here we are. Johans bumps Leonard out of the way, and Savarel comes screaming in a turn one, takes himself, Michael Sykes, and Chris Johans off the road. Marcus Leonard gets some damage as well in the triple nine car, not what he was hoping for today in the Xenos, one of their home races. The other in British Columbia at the end of the year. Here is Melanie Cleveno in car number 74. Uh, Cleveno has been making quite a hero of herself all throughout the weekend. She's been very quick throughout most of the practices. This car was driven by Scott Stoiler for most of the season. Speaking of Scott Stoiler, here he is along with BJ Pushana at the Dutino's usual habitat at the back of the field. Dutino has not terribly been terribly fast here. Chris Johans making an aggressive move. Oh no, VJ Pushana is around backwards. This could be bad. Oh, Jacob Eichholz, the 231 car involved. VJ Pushanda, that was a could have been a very scary incident down here. Down here, but we'll see what happens here from the overhead shot as we're following Chris Johans through the field. Car number 64, he's already alongside. Scott Stoiler tries to cut him off. Johan shows he's not too impressed, and Stoiler, I think, shoved back into him a little bit, and that just sent the 42 car around. The officials rule this is a racing incident. The two Dalton Blackbirds just veered out of the way to try to not be involved in that mess, but Chris Johans in the 64 is definitely uh, trying to aggressively force his way back to the front of the field in car number 64. Here's Julian Nasova in car number 8. Trying to make a challenge on Kevin Dwyer on the first lap. Nasova hits the back of the 72. Nasova into the wall. Oh, look out, look out, look out. Blake Camphausen and uh, one of the Majestic Motorsports cars. I believe that was Pasen and went around on the right side. And uh, Julian Nasova in car number 8. An early scare there for the Russian driver who won earlier in the year in France. Here is uh, Ryan Matthews in the 11 car. And that's Chris Johans directly behind him. Johans makes a move. Matthews around in a straight line. Ryan Matthews, the 11, hits the wall. Blake Camphausen just turned right into him. Matthews almost rolls the car. Charlie Waters in the 30 is in it. Nasova just barely gets through that mess. What was that all about? This is still lap one. Matthews is out, and so is Charlie Waters. Now, here we go. Chris Johans tries to make a move here. I think Ryan Matthews tried to shut the door on him a little bit while Johans was trying to make, the, trying to make a pass, but Johans turns him around in a straight line. Usually, that would bring an active time penalty. I don't see one. I don't know why. Absolutely no idea why not. Here is Melanie Cleveno and Adrian Devereaux battling for a position. Cleveno setting up Devereaux towards the, the uh, rather fast chicane towards the end of the circuit here. But Devereaux trying to hang on. Devereaux goes a bit wide. Cleveno takes over third. Melanie Cleveno from Switzerland is making a hero of herself so far. This weekend, here is the other Majestic Motorsports car as uh, uh, Crash uh, Chris Johans, excuse me, trying to make a move around him. In turn one, Mika Pasen in the Cariala Hero. Um, not exactly uh, been having an ideal weekend, but of course this is his first weekend with that team, whereas he had been running with the with the World Sport team for uh, some time. Those are, I think, some familiar faces to him. 
Anyway, uh, make a pass in, in car number 12. It's not exactly the most one of the most competitive of rides in the series, but he's making the most of it. Here is Peter Short in the 19 car. Four-time world champion Peter Short, I might add. Car Knight in the Black Diamond 19 car. I don't know how long he'll be in this ride. Chris Davenport is expected to run a couple races in this car at the end of the season. So um, we'll have to wait and see. But he's battling out the two DeGarmo Enterprises cars. of uh, Yamino Tenchi in the yellow 25 and Zelda Ashby in that uh, green and gold 55. Uh, Ashby in particular has been fairly uh, quick this weekend. Didn't qualify very well. Now here's Packer Carroll. He's got a new crew chief and he's doing some rally cross. Packer Carroll doing a little bit of rally cross there, but he gets back on track. Loses second to Melanie Cleveno. New crew chief for Packer Carroll, David Stoyanov. And uh, they've really been uh, making things work for Packer Carroll. He wasn't too impressed with uh, the crew chief change. And uh, just not really been a good couple of weeks for him because uh, he's just coming off his mother passing away. But Packer Carroll here has just seemed a little bit more motivated than he, than he usually has been in car number two. But he's losing ground at the moment. That's Adrian Devereaux in car number one, the reigning series champion. As Devereaux just, oh, well, maybe a little bit of contact there between the two cars. But uh, Devereaux, that's actually going to hurt Devereaux's momentum a little bit. Uh, you can say what you like about Adrian Devereaux, but that was that contact there was definitely not helpful for him because Packer Carroll uh, is still side by side with Adrian Devereaux. I love the way these first couple of corners are constructed because it's perfect for TM Master Cup Series cars. And Devereaux finally clears Packer Carroll, but that took a little longer maybe than it should have. Here is Peter Short in car 19. Is uh, he's lost some ground to the Degarmo cars and Kevin Dwyer. He's trying to make a move. Oh, he get he got in the back of Ashby. Ashby gets in up short, and they're both in the tires and both out of the race. Peter Short in his uh, other Master Cup Series start also went out early. VJ Pushanda into the pits along with Marcus Leonard. Pushanda's already a lap down. Ian Cooper in the triple seven car goes out from fifth place. He had an awesome start to the race in the Lysander car. But um, he goes out from fifth, and that's a shame because he was actually very, very fast this weekend in that uh, 777 EFR A90. Davina Henton in car number six, Packer Carroll's teammate, drops out from ninth in the second Volpe. Luciano Savaral has gotten an active time penalty, so he's way behind the eight ball. Cuts a tire, even further behind. All that contact in turn one has clearly not helped his case. Here's the Atlantic Motorsports entry, the Lewis and Ricky's Auto Care car number 56 of Ben Atkins. Spent most of last week testing here. I'd say it's paid off because Atkins has been very, very fast all throughout the weekend. The former Dash Cup champion has uh, really been uh, making a home for himself here in the Master Cup Series in this Independence Trophy, and it's really uh, helped guys like him get his name out. Uh, remember, one year ago, I don't think anyone would have thought that the Dash Cup champion would be making a start here. Here's Lewis Kingston and Yamino Tenchi, and Tenchi turns Kingston! Kingston loops it around but perfectly saves the car! Now, there's some people you don't want to run into the back of in this series. That's one of them. Lewis Kingston, the Avenger. He doesn't have that nickname for no reason. Adrian Devereaux, car number one, is trying to get around uh, Melanie Clevin on the 74. And I saw that time penalty coming right there. Here is uh, Adrian Devereaux. Gets around Melanie Clevin. He's now sitting in second place. Lena Roderick up to seventh place. Locks the brakes up a little bit. Runs in the back of Arto Kekin and spins himself off the track. He changed two engines in practice, and uh, really he's not been too confident with this car, but he's uh, just said he's going to try to make the best of it. Uh, I don't think that's quite what he had in mind. Matthias Taub and Adrian Devereaux running 1-2. We're on, I believe, lap 5. Yes, lap 5. And Adrian Devereaux hooks the back of Taub and punts Taub into the wall. Just a quick tap by Adrian Devereaux. And Taub went around into the wall, and I believe that's broken the right front suspension. That means Taub is done. Wow, a lot of drama early on here in the round of Quebec. Here is Devereaux just made way, came, yeah, just accelerated way too fast off the corner and just ran straight into the back of the 10 car and uh, didn't really get off his back bumper, really. Uh, that wasn't exactly very sportsmanlike by uh, Adrian Devereaux. And, uh, well, anyway, here's Chris Johans in the uh, 64 car. He gives a slight poke to Tom Delgado, and Delgado overshoots the corner. Now, Considering how far the 37 went off the course, I'd say he was going to miss that anyway. Oh, Dale Roswell's in trouble, and he gets putted by the uh, Majestic Motorsports car of Mika Pasanen. That's car 12. Roswell out in the Freedom for Palestine entry. Rather unfortunate, Mika Pasanen runs into the back of Dale Roswell. Oh, he almost got tagged by a couple of cars there. Uh, Pasanen and... Oh, Pasanen gets hit by Michael Sykes. So Pasanen's uh, return not exactly going to plan. 
He's already taken Roswell out. Tom Delgado's been having brake troubles, as I mentioned earlier. And, well, that's just showing how much brake trouble he's having. He threw it into the wall there in the last corner. The Lewis and Ricky's car. Ben Atkins is the first car into the pits for the first uh, pit stop cycle. Along with Chris Johns in the 64, who still doesn't have a time penalty yet for some reason. Anyway, running here with Melanie Cleveno in car number 74, the leader of the race. Her third Master Cup Series start, and Melanie Cleveno is in the lead. So, we're now going to be treated to uh, some of Cleveno's driving out front. We're going to see if she's able to hold on to the prep, hold on there. Oh, Martinez in trouble. Jose Luis Martinez, uh, he was up to 10th in the uh, in the Cats, and, and he's really proved his worth so far this year, but unfortunately his day ends rather early in car number 7. Jacob Eicholtz is three laps down, and he's really been doing nothing but jam up Danny Savin, who's running in 20th place. Oh, Savin does not appreciate that. Danny Savin has been calling for some blue flags to be waved at Jacob Eicholtz, but I don't see any. What are the marshals doing? Uh, well, anyway, here we are back with Melanie Clevin on the 74. We're going to see if she can hang on to the pressure of uh, leading the race. Um, maybe not. Cleveno is going to have to give up the right-hand lane to Packer Carroll, but the last couple of turns, I think, are going to play into Carroll's favor in uh, car number two. So, Carroll has now cleared Cleveno. He takes over the lead of the race, and the last turn's a right-hander, and I believe Packer Carroll is actually scheduled to pit this lap. And there he comes. Melanie Cleveno in as well, along with Arto Kekkonen in third. Kekkonen's got hit from the back by Leonard Roderick as well. Scott Bates in the pits, Lewis Kingston... Now, um, Anthony Griffin, the Zach Duff in the uh, car number five. Now, he's been having a... Oh, contact! Duff just ran into the uh, 74 car in the pit, so that's definitely going to cause some damage to the Cleveno car. And that means a post-race stewards inquiry. So, oh boy, I don't think Duff's going to be terribly happy about that. Anyway, Packer Carroll is leading after the first uh, round of pit stop cycles. Melanie Cleveno second. Adrian Devereaux would be in third, but of course, with that time penalty, that's going to throw him further back in the field. We'll give you the uh, full rundown of the field in just a couple of minutes. Anyway, Packer Carroll really, uh, really showing that he can run at the front here. I believe he's been told by Volpe either you win a race or you lose your drive for next season. But uh, here's Adrian Devereaux now coming back at Melanie Cleveno. Cleveno is going to now dedicate herself to the left hand side, tries to make an ambitious move. Cleveno really going for it here in car 74. Almost took herself and Packer Carroll out. Cleveno just held on to it and tried to miss him. So clearly there is definitely the desire for Cleveno to win races and to be at the front, but just does not seem to be able to handle the pressure quite yet. So I think someone needs to cool Cleveno down on the radio a little bit and uh, maybe let her to get the number one car of Devereaux go by and uh, maybe use Devereaux as a, as a pick to get through the uh, car number two there, Packer Carroll. So, have to see. Uh, it doesn't look like Clavino is taking that advice because she is uh, apparently convinced uh, that's for position. Now here's Chris Johans in 13th place. Should he even be there? I mean, he's been uh, hitting just about everything there is out there to hit uh, so far. I mean, uh, it's caused a couple of incidents out there, and I don't see a time penalty being thrown his way. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. Uh, I know they ruled the first one as a racing incident, I can believe that, but uh, the incident with Matthews at least should get a time penalty, and uh, in the incident with Delgado, I have a feeling that Delgado is going to go wide anyway. Here's Craig Mummert in the 29 car as he goes off the road and into the tires, and Craig Mummert's, uh, well, that just epitomizes his whole season, really. And uh, there you see Tom Delgado, who's having brake trouble, go right past him. Here's Adrian Devereaux now continuing to meddle around with the battle for the lead. He's gotten around Cleveno, as you already saw earlier, and now he's having a run at Packer Carroll. Now here's Arto Kekkonen getting around Cleveno. You just saw this in the back of the frame, but that was a pretty clean pass. A little bit of contact, but um, it's just nothing major, really, as uh, Kekkonen is able to clear the 74 car and put himself in second place. And now Cleveno counterattacks, but she's really trying to go back after him, but uh, Packer Carroll is getting hounded by a car he's not really racing with. Well, this is certainly a very interesting situation for Packer to be in. He's leading the race, not very convincingly, and he's got Adrian Devereaux, who really isn't racing for a position with breathing down his neck. But if Devereaux gets far enough away from him, Devereaux could actually cancel out his time penalty, so it is, so 
And I'm not really sure if Packer should bother racing him. Looks like he's uh, decided, no, I'm going to let Devereaux go through in the one car. Uh, or maybe not. Looks like Packer Carroll has opted not to let Adrian Devereaux get away. Once Devereaux has gotten into clean air, uh, there's been several occasions this season where he has opened up a very substantial gap over the rest of the field. Nobody's won a race and gotten an active time penalty at the same time. Here comes Arto Kekkonen in the nine. But uh, I don't think Packer Carroll is willing to give Devereaux that opportunity to be the first driver to win a race and get an active time penalty at the same time. Arto Kakinen in car number nine, though, uh, doesn't seem to care, and he's uh, having a run at Packer Carroll. I don't think Kakinen is worried about Devereaux at all, but uh, clearly Packer Carroll is. Arto Kakinen now finally clears car number two, and looks like he's going to have a run on Adrian Devereaux, who I believe is actually due to pit this lap. So we'll have to see if... Uh, Arto can stretch his lead, and clearly he has, and Devereaux has gone into the pits. So here we are on this, on the end of lap 10. Arto Kakinen is leading the race in car number 9 with Packer Carroll in second, and Cleveno sitting back in third. Scott Bates is a rather distant fourth. Chris Johans in car number 64 is pitted in lap 10 along with Ben Atkins. Adrian Devereaux pitted in lap 10 as well, as I already mentioned. Here's Kurt Pliskin uh, duking it out with Yamino Tenchi. This is really the only other battle on the racetrack, uh, so... Uh, there really has not been a whole lot going on other than that thrilling battle up front. It's This battle is not even for position uh, because Tenshi has a time penalty, so there's really no point for them to be racing uh, as hard as they are, but uh, they're putting out a pretty good show regardless, so uh, all credit to Yamino Tenshi and Kurt Pliskin, but here we go anyway up the hill as we now are going to enter this very, very tight um, left-hand corner after a rather high-speed zone. It's been very difficult for some of the mechanics to set cars up because there are so many... Uh, long straights and uh, slow corners along with some very fast corners towards the uh, beginning and end of the course but Arto's in trouble! Arto Kakinen's in trouble from the lead of the race! Car number nine is out! Fate. Arto Kakinen! Oh, can you believe it? He's He's gone out in car number nine. Melanie Cleveno in the 74 car is running in second place but wait a minute. Melanie cleveno has gone out in the same lap! So Packer Carroll has lost both of his main competitors Due to mechanical failures on the same lap, this race could just have fallen right into his lap. Pack, Packer Carroll pits on lap 11, and we have gotten reports that Hodges Walter Racing is appealing the time penalty on Adrian Devereaux. Devereaux is ahead of Carroll on the road. However, um, we'll, ha we'll have to see if uh, Devereaux is ahead of him now. De if Devereaux does get his time penalty appealed, he's back in the lead of the race, and Carroll will have to chase him down. Now, I understand the reason that Hodges Walter Racing is appealing the time penalty on Devereaux is because Chris Johans has not gotten one yet. So, um, we'll have to wait and see how this turns out. But, uh, we haven't seen a time penalty to the 64. Car number one, if he... What is, uh, Anthony Griffith doing back in 21st place? Uh, well, that's interesting. Anyway, um... Zach Duff in car number five may also have a time penalty uh, coming towards him, or possibly a point penalty because uh, of that pit lane contact. And we all know that sits well with Master Cup Series officials, especially when there's people working on the car that you hit. So I don't exactly think Duff is going to earn himself too many brownie points um, with uh, Master Cup Series stewards, and I can't believe I just said that. But anyway... Um, so, we'll have to wait and see how some of the uh, post-race time penalties and all that are going to come into play. This is going to be a very, very confusing end of the race, I can tell you that much. Anyway, Packer Carroll in car number two still leading. This is probably going to be his greatest threat, Chris Johans. He's the quickest car on the track. Oh, boy. Chris Johans is going to pass Duff, take over third. Anthony Griffith, I mentioned him earlier in the 08 car. He had a very slow pit stop, and uh, I wonder if PSI has been shoving some of the uh, better resources, faster pit crew over to Kurt Pliskin's team. Well, um, whoa, whoa, Craig Mummert way off the road in the 29 car. Into the tire wall, and that's definitely going to be out of the race. He collapsed the suspension there. And uh, Michael Sykes back here in the 44 car battling with Mika Passanen in car 12. Uh, Michael Sykes been very quiet about the whole MCMA debacle, <clears throat> but uh, anyway, his race has not exactly gone very well. Chris Allen and Danny Sauvin have been putting on a pretty good battle here. Uh, they're around 14th place, so Chris Allen and Danny Sauvin, uh, both of them are really giving their independence trophy runs a good go. Oh, Chris Allen running Danny Sauvin out wide. 
Oh boy, oh boy. Danny Sovins had enough of people, I think, running wide today in uh, car number 81. <clears throat> but um, looks like Danny Sovin might get the position here as they come into the chicane towards the end of the course. Danny Sovin, the 81's got the edge. And Chris Allen fights back. Danny Sovin slides the car wide. Uh, Chris Allen's not exactly been playing nice with Danny Sovin, and Danny Sovin's finally got around him. So, um, we'll have to see how that pans out. Here is lap 16, Packer Carroll into the pits. Scott Bates into the pits. I see Zach Duff and a yellow car, Yamino Tenchi, into the pits. Kurt Pliskin in, Lewis Kingston in, Roderick stays out. An extra lap, and then he pits on lap 17. Kevin Dwyer in car number 72 is, uh, well, really been having kind of a nothing week. He's just not been uh, on the pace. The SAR has really been letting him down. Uh, this weekend. They haven't been fast. Kevin Dwyer brings the car into the pits in uh, car number 72. Oh, I saw something at the back of that car. Um, we'll have to see how this goes. And Oh, he's on fire now! Ke get out of that car, Kevin. I saw something under that car that didn't look very good. And uh, there's smoke billowing out of that car. Get out of there, Kevin. It's on fire! Here is uh, Pat here's Jacob Eichelt, uh, son of Patrick Eichelt, the uh, champ car driver. He's up uh, four laps down and tootling around in 24th place. Sums up his, uh, well, his Arla se campaign from this season. It's just been an unmitigated disaster uh, on the Arla side of things. But his independent trophy run's going quite well up until now. This is his final run. Packer Carroll still leads the race, as you can see. Adrian Devereaux has whittled away his, his uh, time penalty, and he's now in fifth on the board. So, Chris Johans running in second place. Should he get a time penalty? Do I really need to argue that? Anyway, he's still running in second. He doesn't have a time penalty somehow, but uh, I guess the stewards felt that Ryan, that the incident with Matthews was, uh, Chris Johans was too much along, too far alongside Matthews for Matthews to uh, defend the position. I don't know. I, I, I just don't understand how he can still get away with it. But anyway, Here's Ben Atkins in the 56 car. I raised the question, was all the testing he did worth it? Absolutely. Leonid Roderick in car number four is hounding Kurt Pliskin in the 16. Uh, there's been some concerns that um, from Roderick that PSI might be Pliskin's team and not really open to a two-car operation. Um, anyway, Chris Johans in on lap 20. Packer Carroll responds and pits on lap 21. Michael Sykes, who saw him in the pits, and here's why. He... Finally had a engine failure on that Inglesby. Michael Sykes drops out after a miserable weekend. He's been very fast this season, but he's just not very lucky. Anyway, here's Packer Carroll in car number two. He's uh, still in the lead of the race. Um, but remember, we've still got a lot of time penalties to sit through today, so this could be a very, very complicated post-race. Here's Jacob Eicholtz doing what he's been doing all weekend, spinning off the course and making sandcastles. Hope you put a nice flag on that one. Anyway, oh no, Danny Salmon and Chris Allen have gotten together. I've said earlier that these two weren't racing each other very cleanly, and clearly Danny Salmon's had enough of it. Salmon just gets into the chicane way too hot, gets into the back of Allen, turns Allen into the wall and out of the race. Salmon hits the wall, but he only really loses one place on the track. So, anyway, advantage Salmon, I believe, on that. Even though he uh, did get a time penalty, it didn't matter. Here is Zach Duff in the five car, who's had a solid run. Chris Johans in car number 64 has gotten ahead of Devereaux, who really blew that final pit stop. Meaning, of course, that uh, Chris Johans is going to have quite a task to catch Packer Carroll in car number two. However, Packer Carroll in this number two car, the Mayasaw Bulpy, comes off the final corner, and he puts the demons to rest, as Packer Carroll is going to take his maiden TM Master Cup Series victory in car number two. And I bet that saved his drive for next season. Packer Carroll in the Maya Soft car at the sponsor's home race finally takes his first Master Cup Series win. I don't think people thought he could do it. Chris Johans took a very controversial second place finish. I don't care how many cars he hit. Uh, to be put that far back early in the race to come back and finish second is still a pretty impressive job by... Uh, the Floridian driver. Scott Bates from Oklahoma came home third. Zach Duff, the highest of the Canadians in the field, came home fourth. Ben Atkins in fifth place. Big pat on the back to you, son. Well done. Leonid Roderick came home sixth. Pliskin seventh. Adrian Devereaux's time penalty dropped him to eighth. Tenchi's dropped her to tenth. 
And let's go a little further back. Scott Stoiler and Vijay Pushanda both scored points. But from what I understand, both of the two Tinos failed post-race inspection. They were a couple pounds underweight. So I don't think they're keeping those results. Spare some sympathy for Anthony Griffith back in 14th place. I'm convinced he would have had a solid top 10 run if it wasn't for the pit crew costing him several seconds in the pits and eventually costing him a lap. I hate to join the Lance Andrews Cynics Club, but uh, Kurt Pliskin's having a pretty good run in the championship standings, whereas Griffith really isn't, and uh, it's about that time of year where teams decide to throw some of their weight behind one driver at the expense of the other driver in the team. The kind of antics that Formula A teams get up to sometimes. It's kind of ugly that we have to see that here. But anyway, now that I've left the Lance Andrews Cynics Club in my rearview mirror, Time to focus on some of the other people in the top 20. Danny Sabin, as I mentioned earlier, only lost one position as a result of his incident with Chris Allen. He dropped from 14th to 15th. Marcus Leonard in the triple nine car was already having a bad day, but when the picker blows the final pit stop, and uh, when I mean blows the final pit stop, I mean uh, a pit stop that can be measured in minutes instead of seconds, um, he fell two laps down. Luciano Salvaral, uh, to his credit, after losing two laps to that cut tire and his time penalty, uh, maintained the gap. He uh, actually, I think, set fastest lap of the race. Too bad you were two laps down and couldn't really do anything about it. VJ Pushanda finished three laps down, and I believe his last run with Tutino will be at the Round of Ohio. Seeing as Arto Kekkonen retired from this race fairly early, it's no surprise that Adrian Devereaux has a pretty huge lead in the championship. Leonid Roderick and Luciano Samuel stay where they are. Scott Bates jumps up to fifth. Yulina Sova, after coming home 11th, after the pit crew blew the final pit stop, gained three places, jumps up to eighth in the championship. I know that blew the pit crew, blew the final pit stop line's getting a little old, but it's true. Anyway, Zelda Ashby dropped to 9th, uh, Davina Hinton dropped to 11th, Matthias Taub could have had a huge uh, load of points today if Adrian Devereaux didn't happen to him. Anyway, Packer Carroll and Chris Johans are the big gainers this week. They both jumped 13 positions each, and they both sit firmly inside the top 20. Tom Delgado has, not, has started about half the races this, this season. And uh, he uh, sits 16th in the championship. Possenden gained a point, sits 17th. Marcus Leonard uh, just hanging out of the top 20. And so is Dale Roswell and Antero Vertanen, who only ran Cariala, but he still holds 80 points, and that's good enough to be in the top 20. And let's have a look at the Independence Trophy standings, leaving Quebec and entering the round of Ohio. And despite his best efforts to dethrone Mika Turbo, Jacob Eichholz comes up 10 points short. However, he might be in luck if the Tutinos are disqualified and if some other people are handed penalties in front of him. However, Jacob Eichholz's Independence Trophy run is done. Ben Atkins has gained some ground, and so has Danny Sauvin. In fact, Danny Sauvin, I believe, sits in the catbird seat in that 81 car. But keep an eye also on Gaspar D'Souza and the luckiest man in motorsports, Cameron Taylor, in the 126 car. Cameron Taylor and his horrendous livery will be seen at the Round of Ohio, Race 12 of the 2012 season.